Hello viewers, welcome to Ekam IAS Academy. Seeing the image, guess what is the point of discussion for today? It is about microplastics, right? So microplastics, these are microplastics found in most of our daily used items only. We'll see what are the sources and where we can find and what is the issue with these things. But why we are going to discuss about microplastics is because Ministry of Environment and Forests, they have notified some rules with respect to plastic waste management Initially, these rules were given in 2016, but now these rules were amended and they have given fresh rules tightening the norms to label any product as biodegradable plastic. They have tightened some norms. They said they should be they, they should be labeled as biodegradable only if they don't leave any microplastics as part of the remnant or what in the degrading process they should not leave any microplastics then only those products can be labeled as biodegradable this is what the context of the point of discussion so now let us understand more into detail but before that you just need to know what are microplastics microplastics are small minute plastic particles like you have seen on the fingertip also this much small they will be there okay so and they will be entering into the food chain so you can see the process like even from the water bottle okay in case if you are throwing it out so what happens so the fish or any other organism they may try to um, they, they try to eat or they'll try to degrade that particular plastic wear so so that it will enter into one foot of a fish then also it will enter into the larger fish then if this larger fish is caught again it will enter into human so in this way microplastics are also entering into human body through different ways so in this context we'll be looking into what is this plastic management uh, aspect in india and when from when we have and we'll know we'll know the details of plastic waste management rules issued in 2016 and we also understand what is the difference in 2024. What are the fresh guidelines or fresh instructions saying? So these things we'll look into and then we'll understand another concept also as part of this video that is bioplastics. Okay. So for simply to understand, uh, it is easy. Bioplastics means the plastics made from biodegradable material biodegradable material means what they can be degradable on their own itself that means microorganisms they will be degrading them without any human assistance then we call them as biodegradable okay so then if you leave these or uh, biodegradable things then automatically the microorganisms in the soil they themselves will degrade that so that we don't have any remnants left so here what you have to know is these bioplastics can be generally made from different sources like you can say bio sources mainly like starch cellulose protein these are the various types on which we can build these biodegradable plastics okay mainly starch based wheat starch corn cellulose protein like this from anywhere we can bring. see here you can see on the image right first one plant-based material like cellulose you have polyester starch like this from anything sugarcane corn legumes cassava like these things then it will be dissolved in lactic acid or ethanol then chemical compounds polyethylene will be generated then forming process into whatever the shape you want in that way it can be easily prepared so later what happens decomposition if you see day one it will be like this day two day three like this after 80 days or 90 days entirely when it is subjected to uv rate sunlight and heat and, and oxygen in the required quantities then it will be totally degraded so this is what you have to know about bioplastics in this journey what we discuss will know the differences between bioplastic and microplastic will understand the sources and what are the issue with these things and what are the guidelines of ministry of environment with respect to these in the point of discussion okay so then we'll also uh, we'll also discuss about one particular term that is great pacific garbage patch Okay, Great Pacific garbage patch. You can see this is all plastic waste only generated in the last, uh, you can see Pacific Ocean, especially it is between Hawaii and California. This patch is located between Hawaii and California. So almost you can say, and it is spread around an area of 1.6 million square kilometers very huge in extent and mainly what is causing this great pacific garbage patch to be located there means two factors are contributing one is ocean currents second thing is coriolis force you know this coriolis force same force is causing the earth's rotation no? these two things are creating this great pacific garbage patch and again from there it is entering into marine organisms from marine organisms again it has a potential to enter into human food chain also in this context we'll be knowing different aspects related to 
plastic waste management rules issued by the Ministry of Environment recently. Then we'll understand in detail about microplastics, plastic waste management rules. What did 2016 rules say and what is the need for amending now and what are the new rules highlighting and then we'll understand what is the way forward for this solution, right? Then this forms part of GS Paper 3 in Environment Pollution section and you know plastic has become integral part of human lives now. So it is very hard to enforce without plastic and uh, it is not easy to wipe out the plastic from human lives in one day or one go okay so in that way you know even in with respect to single-use plastics also government has notified a ban right from july 1st 2022 only we are imposing a blanket ban on single-use plastic some states like himachal pradesh and maharashtra they have imposed state specific bans prior to this also but there is no change because strict enforcement is still not there and viable alternatives are also not there in this context we will understand to enforce it more strictly and to the try to minimize the plastic waste, the Ministry of Environment has issued fresh new rules with respect to plastic waste management, amending the rules issued in 2016. Then we'll understand what are these microplastics first. So microplastics means very tiny plastics, you can say, which are insoluble. So these are even insoluble in water. That is why they can easily enter into food chain. So as they're insoluble in water and not degradable in nature. So they will be of diameter 1 micrometer to 1000 micrometer size. They can be there and these are the main source of pollution. So where you can find these things means in water bottles you can find or in clothing also you can find these microplastics in synthetic textiles or something. And then even in cosmetics and personal items also you can use even in toothpaste also if you use gel based toothpaste and uh, even in face washes or cosmetics also like exfoliating agents and all there also you will be finding some beads no micro beads we call so these are nothing but microplastics itself so because of the small size, they can easily enter into water bodies or easily they can enter into the food chain and they're causing a lot of trouble to the ecosystem as well as human and other animals' health also. So these are uh, cancer-causing agents also. So it is very difficult for them. Uh, it is very difficult to clean them out or to wipe them from the particular area. So in this context, we'll understand what are the rules that were brought. So here, first thing is you need to know from where larger products you can see or clothing from the fibers you can say then you have small particles which are left from the industries through industrial waste or exhaust you can say then personal hygiene products like toothpaste shower gels face wash exfoliating agents from there also these microbeads all this forms part of microplastic okay then we'll understand what are the rules issued in 2016 so first thing you need to know is with respect to plastic waste management rules they wanted to uh, decrease the uh, minimum size of the plastic or they wanted to ensure that Plastic which is of dangerous uh, nature cannot be used very frequently or very often. So for that they have in this, uh, they have prescribed minimum thickness. So minimum thickness means as thickness increases, it uh, whatever the harmful impact of the plastic will be, it will be decreased. That is why they have increased the minimum thickness from 40 microns to 50 microns means now in case if you are using a plastic bag or something below 50 microns, then you can be punishable. Okay. Then you can be imprisoned or you can be fined also according to the rules. So minimum 50 microns is what necessarily to be followed in case of plastic waste management. So they said even not only this thickness, they have to be collected and recycled. So 50 microns will be easily recycle so they have prescribed a minimum thing then expanding the jurisdiction so previously uh, 2010 or 2011 rules they only have confined to municipal areas but now you know plastic has entered into like everywhere not urban or not only rural areas so everywhere we can see plastic too nowadays that is why because of the increase in use of single-use plastic and all these things they have expanded that scope not only from municipal areas to rural areas also that is the second most important rule you need to remember then they brought a major provision that is extended producer responsibility epr this is a most important provision of plastic waste management because whoever is producing this plastic waste for example if you see normally we'll be having the habit of eating lace no lace you know that packet is also a single use plastic only right but whoever the manufacturer of lace will be he has to or he or she has to take the responsibility of collecting the waste that will be generated by selling this lace packets also that is what extended producer responsibility means they have to ensure Sure that whatever the waste that is getting generated by their production has to be collected and they have to take that responsibility. This is one main important provision 
of plastic waste management the same extends even to e waste management also electronic waste management also do remember okay in case if it is asked in main sentences you have to use this particular word otherwise it doesn't have any major sense okay then you can say then collecting back this is what i told you extended producer responsibility and also the plastic can be used or recycled again in the or they can, can be reused also for road construction now you are seeing houses are also being constructed and in highway construction they are using plastic because of its high durability and all so in that way we are trying to generate we are trying to convert waste into energy source or some useful purposes so this is what with respect to 2016 rules then what happened now why we need to amend if every thing is going well then means there are two things we need to understand here so in the plastic waste management only will be coming across two types of plastics one is biodegradable plastic and second one is compostable plastic so what is the difference between these two is biodegradable means the name itself is suggesting they can be degradable on their own if you are left if you are leaving it to the soil microorganisms will be doing their work here you need to remember is they can be generated from renewable sources or they can be generated from petrochemical sources also both there can be two sources also so here biodegradable plastic they can be generated from renewable or petrochemical sources then what happens in compostable plastic this is nothing but this is a subtype of biodegradable only but they cannot be completely degraded on their own so you need to establish some industrial establishment or some industrial setup is required so that we can degrade them 100% then only they can be degraded that means they cannot be degraded on their own easily so this is a basic difference you need to keep in mind with respect to biodegradable and compostable plastic so here if you see biodegradable degradable can be easily decomposed or naturally decomposed so no tests are required whether it is completely uh, degraded or not you need not test anything here but in compostable plastic they don't degrade completely okay so that is why industrial or large municipal facilities have to be established to test again so whether it is completely degraded or not in this context as we are having this trouble so now you know in 2002 single use plastic so 2022 single use plastics are also banned so now after imposing a ban on these single use plastics now we are focusing on biodegradable plastic you no know, as an alternative in this context when you are using or when you are advising the increased use of biodegradable waste now actually what constitutes biodegradable waste you have to specify you no know, but it was not answered in 2016 rules that is why now 2024 rules were given saying that which are the like which are the rules which uh, which forms part of biodegradable plastics have to be answered this is the first question which is left unanswered in 2016 rules then cpcp again you know it is also mainly responsible for water pollution prevention act you no know? so water act only under which the cpcb was formed in uh, it's as a statutory body you no know? so mainly water pollution is mainly because of plastic waste only you no know? so again cpcb is here interest he is given a purpose or it is having a function to provide a provisional certificate means whether these products in case if a product is manufactured in case if you have to give them biodegradable tag or label then this particular product manufacturing company they have to show that there is no remnant of microplastic released or uh, it is there as part of this degradation process when no microplastics are there then only they will be giving the certificate that these are completely biodegradable that is what the main rule of 2024 is saying so here previously the rules did not specify okay so what is the level of degradation that is required and all so to obtain the certificate and all now that is why the need has arisen in 2024 rules have been issued so first thing you need to remember is it defines the biodegradable plastics as it is not defined in 2016 now it is clearly defining what forms part of biodegradable waste means which are biodegradable by soil or landfill okay and they don't they should not leave any micro plastic if they leave any microplastic then they won't be given a label of biodegradable status if you normally see a hard like a shampoo bottle or something okay there they will be using the tag like these are biodegradable in nature compostable in nature like this okay so this is what you have to remember then these microplastics but still they are not specifying in the rules what type of chemical test you will be conducting to assess whether a microplastic is left in that process or not so this is not answered it and also what extent should be reduced means completely how it, it should be reduced to 0 100% or there should be maximum reduction like 95% or 90% this person 
percentage of microplastic reduction in that particular sample is also not specified. So these are again two lacunas in the laws you can say or in the rules. So then what happens? The manufacture of carry bags and commodities they they can choose either compostable ones or biodegradable ones. If you use compostable plastic, okay, so if you subject them to enough sunlight, oxygen and all, so they will be generating carbon dioxide, water and biogas. You know, normally from this biogas, compost means, you know, plant manure or something, when you subject to composting conditions, they can generate biogas also. So, so this is one possible thing in case if you use compostable plastic. So biogas can be generated waste to energy you can say then this can be subjected to mandatory marking and uh, in the case of food products fssci has to mandate okay whether it has to be compostable or biodegradable according to the requirement okay so this is what the new guidelines is clearly there is no confusion here in 2016 rules in with respect to biodegradable plastic there is no proper definition or proper categorization so now they have brought some categorization what forms part of biodegradable and to consider any product as biodegradable, they should not leave any microplastics as remnants in the degradation process. This is what recent rules of 2024 with respect to plastic waste management are specifying. I hope you understood. Then now we'll see the practice question given for prelims yesterday. In the context of modern scientific research, consider the following statements about ice cube. We have discussed about ice cube uh, observatory, you know, yesterday, neutrino observatory. In this, which is located in Southern Pole or Antarctica region, it is the world's largest neutrino detector encompassing cubic kilometer of ice. This is correct. Second, it is a powerful telescope to search for dark matter, correct? Then it is buried deep in the ice. Okay, this is also correct. So one, two, three is the answer for this question. Then let's see the practice question given on today's theme here you can see with reference to the plastic waste management in india consider the following statements first one india has pledged to phase out single-use plastics sups by 2025 plastic waste management rules 2022 provide for classification of plastics in four categories the rules also provide for extended producer responsibility for plastic packaging this is the third statement given which of the following are correct? Among the given options, choose and answer in the comment section. Then what is the main question given? Analyze the impact of plastic waste, impact of plastic waste on marine ecosystems and measures taken by the government and other stakeholders to reduce the plastic pollution. So you have to answer the impact is first one and measures is the second one. These are the two parts. Then you also have to discuss the opportunities and challenges. Means what are the uses in case if you are using alternatives, what are the opportunities they offer and what will be the challenges we will be facing when you are introducing the single-use plastics. Try to decode the question given into different parts. Then you can easily address each and every part without leaving anything unanswered. So this is how you have to develop the answer writing skills. Okay. Try to answer for this question and answer in the comment section. We'll know with improvements. Then as we have reached the end of the video, today we have discussed about the new rules with respect to plastic man waste management as notified by the Ministry of Environment. We also have seen what are microplastics, bioplastics or biodegradable plastics we have seen. And we also have seen what are 2016 plastic waste management rules specifying and what is the difference with 2024 rules. These are all the things we have discussed as part of this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.